Said, can you explain uh, how could shirk be done? How could a person get involved in shirk in love and fear? There are many ayat in the Quran and a hadith indicating that, that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the only one who is our protector, our guide, and accordingly we should resort to him we should seek help only from him in addition to many hadith uh, in this regard. I would like just to refer to one hadith in which the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, that you have to understand that and you have to be acknowledged that if all mankind got together to benefit you with anything which Allah did not ordain for you, for you they will not be able to. And if all nations got together to harm you with anything which was not preordained for you, they will not be able to. So you should not be afraid of anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the hadith in which the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ماله وولده ونفسه والناس أجمعين. Uh, which means none of you will become a perfect believer. A perfect believer. Until I will become dearer to him in his wealth, his family, all mankind, and including himself. So when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu an made this remark, and he said, by Allah, you are dearer to me than anything and everything, but not more than myself. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, not yet, which means you have not achieved the perfect iman yet. So Umar ibn Khattab in essence said, why Allah, O Prophet of Allah, you are dearer to me than my own self. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remarked saying, Al-ana ya Umar, now we have achieved the perfect iman. No one should be loved. Uh, more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or even close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person can get involved in shirk for innocence when he puts hope in somebody that he can take him out of hardship or difficulty more than Allah or better than Allah. So his mind will be directed towards that person. Ibrahim السلام, was tested with regards to his only son that to show you the kind of test and the kind of love which could mislead a person. When Ibrahim السلام, was given his only child at the age of 86 years old and he loved him so much, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. Now he gave preference to Allah's love over what his heart desired. It is natural to love your son, but it becomes much greater when your son, uh, you've been given this child, the only child, after many years of waiting and after reaching senility and knowing that your wife is naturally sterile. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with the child, whether the first child Ismail from Hajar or the second from uh, Sarah, Isaac. Ibrahim alayhi salam did not hesitate to prove that his love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was given preference and was much more important than his love to his only son. And that's why he did not even think about the command. Likewise, when his son grew up. So that can be practiced in our today's life when the child wants something which is haram and the father knows it is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he does it because he loves his son or daughter so much. So where is your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Let me give you an example. The daughter loves to buy a certain outfit, revealing high jeans, louses, or whatever. If she doesn't have access to the money, she won't buy it. And who would give her the money? The father, the parents. The father is religiously committed and he loves Allah or this is what he claims, okay? 
But because he loves his daughter so much, he bends the rules. And he puts his love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inferior to his love to his daughter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like anyone to be loved in your heart more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means, if your love to anyone happen to contradict your love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then right away your love to Allah should take precedence, should come first, should set the rules. And that will be obvious in your practical applications in every decision you make in your life. Also with regards to fear, likewise, fear is a natural uh, habit. We fear danger, we fear accidents, we fear oppressors, yes. But with that, you have to understand that nothing can harm you in the heavens nor in the earth except by Allah's deep. So that gives you an assurance. Whatever befalls you is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because of this person or the other person. These are all means. That's why we say in the morning and in the evening, Bismillahilladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi wa la fil samai wa huwa sami'ul alim. In the name of Allah, whom with, him, with whose name nothing can harm in the heavens nor on earth, and he is all hearer, all knowing.